his hands is a large the spade like hands and having a dowy feelings and the thickened skin so he found their tribulation and his own warfare in evidenced by the warfare in bruises as well as the anti correlation card can you show me your teeth e mm -hmm. so yes you can see the interdental space is increased so this is also hello my dear doctors this is station 3 cardiology so sir could you please just do like this for me so yes we can see his hands once again. The peripheral stigmata, in fact, in the granite is the clubbing, splinter hemorrhages, tiny hands. To see the genuine lesion as well as the osseous node and the pedicure purpura and, os and the rot spot, spermagaly and hematuria. All are absent. So the absence of the impact of endocrinite is stigmata. But what we found that we found something more extra findings. What are the findings? Let's say this. Starting on the hands that we can feel his hands is a large, the spade like hands and having a dowy feelings and the thickened skin and the hands are sweaty and I can feel the hands are sweaty. So we can make the spot, the diagnosis is a acromegaly here. And also that you can see that absence of ring and you can see some of the edematous hands as well so they spot the diagnosis of the acromegaly and also here very very specifically that we can see the two scar marks here for the carpal tunnel syndrome some of the really scar so ct is really scarred that we can say here so it is spot the diagnosis of the acromegaly so immediately after the spot, the diagnosis is acromegaly that you already thought, that yes, why this is in cardiovascular system, we are expecting the mitral regurgitation due to ring dilatation, due to dilated cardiomyopathy, and that is also can be complicated by atrial fibrillation. So in the past that we are expecting the irregular pass. So you need to count the 15 seconds. So I already counted, this is around 20 into 4 equal to 80 bits per minute. And I can feel the irregular pulse. And finding the irregular pulse, the diagnosis is atrial fibrillation. So yes, immediately after that, we have found the atrial fibrillation. So yes, from the right hand side, the, the forearm that we can see is to the bruises. And these bruises are nothing but his own warfarin right at this moment and also this warfarin evidence that we found that he has got the anti-coagulation alert card at the bedside so these two evidences might you need to remember in your hands that the anti-coagulation alert card as well as the the two bruises whenever you found the atrial fibrillation and whenever you're expecting the atrial fibrillation my dear so you found the atrial fibrillation and his own warfarin evidenced by the warfarin bruises as well as the anti correlation card at the bedside. So immediately after the hands examination, that we are going up to the neck that you're looking for, the JVP. Here the JVP is not raised, so you can put your hands here, and also you can give a good pressure onto the tummy and to look for any evidence of the raised JVP. So this is not the raised JVP, it does mean that the right heart failure is absent but in the neck that what we found if you see the in the neck that we found there is a scar mark here it does mean that he has got the thyroidectomy scar so the, this is the scar that we can see a thyroidectomy scar so this is maybe due to so the goit heart that was thyroidectomy was done earlier that was related to his primary disease that the acromegaly so now looking at the face that we can see her fa his face that the, you can see the lips are enlarged. So the features of the acromegaly and also if he, if he just turn his head so that we can see the ear is the enlarged ear. And also his forehead that we can see the prominent forehead as well. And also his prognathism as well. And also we can see the prominent supraorbital super regions as well. So the very consistent the acromegaly, and also can you can you show me your teeth? E, 
Mm -hmm. So yes, you can see the interdental space is increased. So this is also the consistent with the acromegaly. Now look up for me, for anemia, look down, jaundice, so no anemia, no jaundice. Now stick your tongue out for me. Ah. So yes, we can see that no anemia and tongue up, no jaundice and show me your gum. There is no gum hyperplasia, but that we can feel that his tongue is enlarged. So macroglossia as well. As well. So show me your tongue once again. So it's a macroglossia that we can see the big tongue, large tongue that he has got. So getting down to the face that the chest, that in the chest there are no scars except the one scar that uh, scar on the left upper chest and also the underneath there, there is a box, the pacemaker box that I can feel that is the AICD pacemaker scar. And these AICD pacemaker scar that we can see very clearly. So yes, so this is the AICD. It does mean that his dilated cardiomyopathy is complicated by the tachyarrhythmias and that was needed for the AICD pacemaker scar. So AICD pacemaker does mean that in station 3 cardiology might need to know the dilated cardiomyopathy. So immediately after that the inspection that you need to see the apex beat. So yes, and you need to feel the apex beat as well. So you need to put the hands, the apex beat. The, yes, we can feel the apex beat is displaced and we found here. So definitely this is second, third, fourth and fifth and sixth interosseous space, the anterior axillary line. So apex beat is displaced. This is on the left six interosseous space on the anterior axillary line and thrusting in character is important. Immediately after the apex beat, the findings that you need to know there is a PST because this is important here because the dilated cardiomyopathy is also complicated by the pulmonary hypertension and the right heart failure. So what you need to do, you need to feel the P2, feel the left personal heave and feel the tricuspid regurgitation, the pansystolic thrill here. So you found there is no PST findings. So he is dilated cardiomyopathy is not complicated by the PST. It's because the approach that we learned from the past examination and from the past that we found that the atrial fibrillation, so definitely we need to focus on the mitral valve. So we are making the diagnosis that is a mitral valvular disease, maybe mitral stenosis with or without mitral regurgitation. As because we spot the diagnosis acromegaly, so we made the diagnosis that is a mitral regurgitation that we are expecting. So we found then thrusting displaced apex bit without having the pulmonary hypertension and the right heart failure features. Along with that, now the auscultation. We are focusing the auscultation, especially basically on to get the MR finding, the mitral regurgitation, the pansystolic mama. So what you need to do, you need to just put the stethoscope, but beforehand, the heart sounds. As I said, the heart sounds is the loudest one, soft A2, loud P2 that you are looking for. So loudest one for the mitral stenosis, but in mitral regurgitation, what we can get? the soft tattoo. So we can get soft tattoo. So you can put the stress group here. Along with that soft A2, soft uh, S1, the loudest one, is the mitral stenosis, the soft S1, the mitral regurgitation. So we found the soft S1. And after that, you need to put the stethoscope here for the soft A2 for severe aortic stenosis, for the loud P2 for pulmonary hypertension. So I have listened only soft S1 here. And immediately after that, the mamas, that the mamas that we are focusing onto the left apex bead, my dear. And the apex beat that we can listen. The pansystolic mama. I can listen the mitral regurgitation with the pansystolic mama. Okay. 
and I can listen the mama is radiating to the axilla as well. I can listen the axilla as well. 